How's it going bro? So if you've ever struggled with creativity, this video is going to solve that for you. I have gone from that journey that you're on right now, starting off as a hobby, doing edits for fun pretty much, just doing like shitty videos, the basic subtitle popping animations and I've built my editing style, my work into work that I can charge thousands for. I've had clients where I've charged anywhere from like a thousand bucks to 1,500 and even more now and that's not per month, that's per video. Even while I'm saying this, I'll have some of my work showing on the screen now just so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about and why I am someone who can teach you how to be more creative because if we're being honest you have the skills to execute a lot of ideas if you had the ideas in the first place you could probably do a lot better work than you are right now and what's interesting is you might think that oh no my editing skills aren't enough or I'm not good enough yet or Premiere's not good enough it's like these are things that people told me as well two years ago when I was charging like a hundred bucks everyone told me that if I wanted to make anything more I would have to go to After Effects because you can't be creative on Premiere but boy did I prove them wrong because I sit here today charging more than any of them with work more creative and with a better style than most people can even wish for and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that in this video. So step one to being more creative this is a prerequisite it's something we need to get done before we, I even give you actionable steps. We need to redefine what you believe creativity to be because you might not realize it but your beliefs have a lot more impact than you think. Just by you clicking this video that means you hold the belief that you are not creative yet. And that's okay, but you can probably imagine, right? Imagine one of your friends came up to you and you were kind of just like in small talk and they ask you the question, oh, are you a creative person? You might say like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of creative. Like I edit here and there, like I'm kind of creative, but there is a low chance that you're watching this and you're saying like, yes, I am very creative. More likely than not, you have a limiting belief. Something that you say to yourself that is holding you back. You tell yourself that you aren't creative. But what I want you to understand is that creativity isn't a trait, it's a skill. And just like every other skill, Creativity is just another one where we can train this skill and we can get better at it by simply putting more reps in. We can just do it more. And just like other skills where it's like, oh, if you want to get good at maths, you can just do more maths questions. If you wanted to get better at the gym, you can do more like reps in the gym. If you wanted to get better social skills, you can socialize more. With every skill, you can do something to improve it. And creativity is the exact same thing. So it's really important that you go ahead on this like journey of you becoming more creative from the perspective that it's not that you are an uncreative person. It's just that you haven't learned leveled up this skill yet and that's okay because I mean you've gone through like an education system which doesn't promote creativity like you even with art I did GCSE art like the idea of grading someone on a creative piece of work like by definition it shouldn't be graded so even like the idea of creativity in your head it's completely skewed remember creativity is a skill it's something that we can constantly do again and again and by the time that you've done it a hundred a thousand ten thousand times you can imagine you'd probably be more creative right so the second step of being more creative after we've got your mindset in place is using an inspiration bank. Now I haven't seen many people speak about this but even with the top editors that I speak to when I talk to them one to one they talk about how they get their creative ideas and how they get their inspiration and almost every single one of them have a way of tracking their inspiration. So you can probably relate to this as you go about your day as you go to a park as you go to school as you talk to your parents you probably have like these random spontaneous moments of inspiration where you're like oh that thing looks cool oh I've no I thought of this new thing and it's like we all have have them but so few of us actually capitalize on them so few of us actually take advantage of these ideas we get what i found is the top one percent editors the editors that make a shit ton of progress and they become genuinely like creativity machines they take these random moments of inspiration these random moments of creativity and they store it in one place so that when they are going to edit when they're struggling to make something creative while most people sit there staring at raw footage with no idea what to do what a top one percent editor would do he would look into his inspiration back and realized like oh I remember I thought of that like a few months ago let me see if I can do it here oh wait it works really well let me add another bit from this section of the inspiration back and now he's added all these different parts of inspiration he's gotten before but now he's added it into his current work so you might be asking where do you get this inspiration from and honestly what I found is it's just from other people's editing you might see my editing work now and I hope you would say like it's quite good like I'd, I'd like to say my editing's quite good and creators have definitely said the same but what a lot of people don't realize is I am pretty much just an am amalgamation so I'm just a mix of every single other editor that I've looked up to. I'd be scrolling on Twitter looking at other editors and be like oh wait his editing's really good and then I'd try it in my own work and then I'd see another editor with a different style 
and I liked his one animation he did and I'd put it in my work and I do that with 15, 20, 30 different editors and by the end of it my style it looks amazing but second of all it doesn't look like any of the originals because that is exactly how you find a new style you don't find a new style by simply making one you do it by almost stealing from everyone else and creating a mix and that mix looks nothing like the originals and that now is your editing style if you go in the description right now I have a link to something called the editing vault so it's a resource like an all-in-one resource that I've made for video editors to scale so you can go in there now once you've downloaded it there's a section called the inspiration bank and you'll be able to just add screenshots and like videos of other editors and when you are editing you could just look at the inspiration bank and form some ideas from there so go into the link in the description now get the editing vault right now and the third step to becoming more creative as a video editor is understanding how to edit in layers so I talk about this concept all the time editing in layers but first before I explain it I want to tell you a little story so I'm around 10 years old I'm in primary school and I'm in an art class I'm drawing this mountain scene with pencil and like coloring pencils and I'm drawing some birds in the horizon and I'm drawing like you know those shitty little birds where you can draw them it's like that shape and it's like they're just tiny little shapes I was drawing them and I'm doing it I'm doing it and on one of them I make the line a little too long so no worries it's in pencil I'll just erase it so I'm looking around on my table and I'm asking each person like oh do you have a rubber and every single one of them is saying that oh no they don't have one and the teacher hasn't given them one so I'm thinking like oh okay maybe teacher forgot to give it it's like no worries I'll just ask I asked the teacher so I put my hand up I asked the teacher she comes over I point out my work I say I need an eraser rubber and she just laughs she laughs almost in like a mocking tone saying that you're not getting an eraser she, well in the UK we call it rubber so we're not you're not getting a rubber see and I was so confused I'm like what do you mean like I do art at home as well I draw it in like pencil and stuff I always have a rubber why would I not be allowed a rubber that's so like that's kind of stupid of course I'm a 10 year old so I didn't call it stupid but I'm thinking like that's just silly why am I not allowed to use a rubber I ask again and again she keeps saying no and by the end of it I ask why and she says because I want you to turn it into something and I was confused I'm like what do you want me to turn it into like the bird's gone too long man like I made a mistake she said I don't care I want you to turn it into something little 10 year old me is still a bit annoyed but my teacher walks away so I grab my pencil and I look back at my drawing I started like sketching away at it trying to like blend it into the other line you know when you like try to outline something and the pen kind of comes off and then you try bringing it back but it goes even thicker than usual so now it looks stupid like by the end of it I'm drawing like a full instead of those shitty little birds I'm actually drawing like a decently like 3d kind of looking bird and of course it wasn't the best I'm only 10 years old but it was a lot better than those simple birds that I was making and looking back at it I'm realizing just how right she was because that exact same concept this concept of turning your mistakes into art it's the exact same like framework the same method I use when creating complex edits today because the best editors that you see the guys making these complex animations that you couldn't even imagine doing right now these guys saying they're doing it in Premiere Pro and you're like bro I couldn't even do that in After Effects I couldn't do that in any software it's like I promise like it's not it's not my fault like the software is bad it's like these editors are managing to edit unlike you and the reason is is they know something you don't they understand that the best edits they're not made frame by frame they start with the raw footage and they turn it into a simple video and from that simple video they add some light effects and from those light effects they look at one section and they say hmm what can I do with this section how can I make it more complex so what they do is they drag on a random effect they make the transform move from left to right just random they're not sure why it would move that way but they just try it they add on some random random glow effect and then they add a PNG which comes on at the same time and then they make it subtly move with a handheld shake they're adding all these random effects on they're not sure where this is going but I mean worst case scenario you can just control Z right literally just think about how weird it is like you right now you're probably scared to experiment with editing because you're scared that you might mess up the edit oh I'm this client is paying me how can I mess up this edit but you realize like you can just undo it your fear of making a bad edit is holding you back from ever getting good I promise you the best editors that you see you might look up to me you might look up to other editors the best editors that you see with the best and most creative work have made more shitty animations than you have in your entire life because all your life you've pretty much been taught that mistakes are bad that if you make a mistake never do that thing again focus on your strengths even in school just think about it like the grading system that you're put on you do a test with exact answers and if you do not get those answers you are downgraded you are literally value as a human as a student 
is put down. You got those questions wrong? Okay, you're no longer an A student. You are now a C student. You are punished heavily for your grades. You're punished for making mistakes. And don't get me wrong, in the education system, that works perfectly. Like, I was quite a smart kid. Like, by education standards, like, I was a smart kid. I was getting A's and A stars. But the only reason was when I made a mistake. So let's say I made, I got a test and I got 50% instead of like 80%. I would get 50%. They'd give me a lower grade. They'd basically like punish me by literally lowering your self-worth. Like, they call you a C student. And now you know that next time you will not make those mistakes again. And while this does work technically, oh, my grades are going up. Like, I ended up with A stars and A's. It's like, it fucks your entire mentality on the idea of making mistakes. So now you've gone into editing thinking that, oh, I can't make mistakes editing. I can't do like a bad animation because then my client won't like it. Bro, you have to be willing to start with a bad animation and then you build on top of it. You start with the base. The base is this like just this shitty like carved out wood. So you know when like there's woodworkers, these guys, these craftsmen that do really nice like intricate woodwork. They start with just a fat block of wood and they just chop huge chunks of it off. And then once they've done that, they go a little more fine. They use a chisel and then once they've done that, they use the small scraping ones and they create this like amazing, beautiful piece of art. These craftsmen, these people who work with these beautiful pieces of art, do you think they would have gotten as good if they came in with the super precise knife and they tried to break into a huge log and they tried to make something beautiful from that? Of course not. The reason their work is so good is because they're willing to just chop at this piece of wood and maybe they make a mistake, but it's all right because they can just start again. But now they know what to do and what not to do. And if anything, a lot of the time they'll chop off a piece of wood. It's not gone to plan. They didn't want to chop off that much. But then they work with it anyways and they realize it. Their final piece, it ended up better than they could have even imagined. Editing works the exact same way. What I'm telling you is you should go into Premiere and genuinely have the mindset of like, yeah, I can mess up. If I mess up, it's not a bad thing. Of course, I'm going to work to make it better, but I can mess up an edit and then go back to that edit and continue making it better. Even my edits, do you think my edits start as like this crazy movements? No. A lot of the time it starts with a plain background, a PNG moves up with some stupid animation and then I move it to the right and then I add a shake to it and then I'll make it glow and do you see how I'm adding layer by layer a new effect and a lot of the time I'll drag an effect on, I don't think it looks nice, I'll just control Z it. And I'm gonna give you a warning now, you're gonna have times where you're sitting there, it's late and you're in your room on your PC trying to edit, you're demotivated and you're still struggling to be creative and now you're staring at this footage not knowing what to do and you're gonna feel that temptation to distract yourself, you're gonna feel that temptation to step away from that discomfort, that feeling that you can't create a good edit, it's uncomfortable. So what do most editors do? They open up Twitter, start scrolling for a bit, saying it's their break. 20 minutes later, they've opened up Discord, they're talking in some random server that doesn't even help them. Now they're watching YouTube, they're saying, I'm just looking for sound effects for inspiration, but like you're watching a random video. And then an hour later, they'll come back to their edit, not an inch closer to where they want it to be, not a frame closer to the video being finished, and they're still struggling with creativity. I'm telling you now, you are going to have moments where you want to distract yourself because you're struggling to be creative. But I promise you, take it from someone that's gone on the same journey as you. Everything you want is on the other side of that small hump. That tiny discomfort you're feeling, I promise you after that, the clients you want, the creative edits you want to create, the money you want to make from editing, everything lies after that hump. When you're struggling to be creative, when you're trying different effects and it seems like nothing's working and you feel like there's no hope for this one animation, I want you to genuinely sit there and actively tell yourself, I will not open Twitter. I will stare at this clip and I will drag random effects on it and I will move random keyframes and I will add random values onto it until it works. I refuse to distract myself because after this discomfort, this little hump, this struggle I'm going through, that is everything I want. Because when when you become a more creative editor, when you use all these tips, when you have the belief, when you use the inspiration back from the editing vault, when you actually sit through that discomfort, you just allow yourself to honestly be shit for a while and realize that's how you get better. That is probably the best path that you could be on for you to make a stupid amount of money from editing. I've gone to the point now where the same type of reaction video that I would edit two years ago for a hundred bucks, I can charge over a thousand. And you might not believe me and honestly, I'm not going to fucking bring up screenshots and shit. If you don't want to believe 
believe me, cool. But you can see the size of the creators that I work for. And you can imagine these guys, they have the money to spend on their editors. If I wasn't as creative as I was, do you really think that I would have gotten to work with these guys? And what I'm telling you is that you have the exact same potential as me. When I started off, when I was like three years ago, I would say, when I started editing, I wasn't creative. I was using the same like basic on YouTube when you search up how to edit gaming videos. Like I would use those tutorials as well. I would use the basic subtitle pop-ins. I would use like not even like a slide and I would have like things hard cut, no transitions. Like I wasn't creative by any means. This is a skill that I've learned. And what I'm saying is that you can learn the exact same skills. And like all skills in life, when you do it more times, you get better at that skill. Like I've had times now, I promise I'm going to sound insane by saying this. I have had times where I will sleep and then I will wake up. And in that time, I have thought of an edit. I will dream about an animation. I will wake up, sit at my PC and exactly create that animation. Literally like four by four, I would think like, okay, yeah, I remember the animation was going like this and oh wait, I can just use a transform to do that. And I literally have practiced this skill of creativity so many times. And that might sound kind of crazy. Like if you believe me or not, I don't give a shit, but I don't struggle with creativity anymore. I genuinely edit my videos with a smile on my face, knowing that I'm literally just thinking thoughts and I'm just making it. Like there's no barrier between my my thoughts and me editing. I just execute whatever I feel like executing. If you want to get to that point where creativity is no longer a constraint, I really recommend you just follow everything I said in this video. You becoming more creative is such a fundamental part of your editing journey. And honestly, like this journey you're on is going to be amazing, bro. Of course, the money's nice. Being able to charge four, five hundred, a thousand, one thousand five hundred. It, it's nice. But even past the money, knowing that you have built something on your own, the amount of confidence like I walk around knowing that this is a business like what you're seeing here is a business like my editing this YouTube everything is a business right that's like you're editing and you're learning from me because I have learned the business skills and now I'm teaching it to you the person you become because of that you become unrecognizable if you saw me when I was 16 17 years old I'm only 18 now I'm turning 19 in a month but if you saw me a year or two ago in pictures and videos like you can just see it in my face I was nowhere near the person I am today and I attribute so much of that just because I know deep down that I've built something for myself people talk about confidence all the time and I genuinely believe like the only way you can be confident is if you have something to be confident about so when some random person tells me like a stupid joke or they'll try to like take the piss out of me like I've been called broke for the fact that I wear black t-shirts every day but like if I wasn't making money that probably would make me insecure I'll be real like I'd start buying other clothes I'd start going shopping and honestly that's what I did now I'm thinking about it me in first year college so about two years ago I went on shopping sprees literally every other day like every two three days I would be in the shopping mall buying clothes and honestly I think it was out of insecurity but now I wear the same black t-shirts I wear the same clothes literally like to the gym I wear the same clothes when I'm going out if I'm going out on a date I'll wear the same clothes if I'm going out with my mates I'll wear the same clothes if I'm, I'm sitting at home right now I'll wear the same clothes and the reason I don't care if anyone calls me broke or anything about it is because I know what I've done with my business I know I've scaled to a stupid amount for my age I've made like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12k a month from editing I know that like whatever you say it has no foundation I genuinely believe that if you want to be confident you need to have undeniable proof of the fact that you are who you say you are so to know that i'm able to help you on this journey that you maybe started editing just like me do it as a hobby i used to edit fortnite videos so you probably did like minecraft or roblox or some sort of game or something the fact that i'm able to take you on that same journey is, is such a beautiful thing to me the work i do now the youtube the twitter even the discord some, you can join the discord down below and everything the work i do now in helping editors is like it's something that's genuinely so fulfilling to me to know how much i've developed myself through entrepreneurship which editing is entrepreneurship i'm so glad that i can help you through the same thing bro so if you do fuck with our message if you enjoy what i'm talking about you can subscribe you can scroll down click the red subscribe button and i'll, I'll have a video here juicy little video is going to pop up here i want you to watch that and other than that take care peace